Now we all know Subaru as a car brand that has gained their reputation at the world rally stage and have a massive cult following for their Impreza and STI models. But unfortunately, all of that good stuff never made it to India. But we did get its station wagon brother. This is a Subaru Forester 2 liter X and it is actually a Chevrolet but we will get into that story later. First, let's get an understanding about what is hiding under the hood of this SUV station wagon crossover thing. Now under the hood of the Forester lurks a really nice engine, a 2 liter flat 4 called the EJ20, a single overhead cam horizontally opposed flat 4 and it is a very nice engine and it's quite quirky. Stock, it produces 120 bhp and uh, now in its stage 2 form, it produces 140-150 bhp. It comes with unequal length headers from the US that has been shipped specifically for this car and everything from there onwards, the full exhaust system is built in-house at Engineering Exponent. Funnily, the end muffler is from a Polo GT TSI and the tip inside it is from a Cooper D. It's quite quirky, but if it works, that's all that it needs. To all of you asking just how the Forester has even made it to India, the answer is actually quite simple. In 1999, General Motors purchased a 20% stake in Fuji Heavy Industries, now known as Subaru Industries. While GM sold and divested its entire stake in the Japanese company in 2005, in between, there was a time when Chevy decided to take the Forester, slap Chevrolet badges on it and sell it in India. But this specific Forester has been brought to its original Subaru glory. Now when the Forester crosses by your road, you might most probably not catch it on your radar because it is such an unassuming car with its simple box design and unassuming looks, it's definitely very sleepy. In terms of the front, you've got uh, a signature Subaru grille and the fog lights have been tinted yellow in ode to the rally heritage of Subaru. The side profile is where you can notice how long and low the car is. It's like a cool mixture of uh, a station wagon and an SUV which makes it look very original. The wheel arches are quite big and this is a stock uh, these are stock replacement suspensions from Kayaba. And uh, you've also got uh, Sparco rims and a really nice rich cherry red colour. That's all of the mods from the owner and there's one mod that I really like is these wheel covers that are Deadpool designed. Now on the inside, it uh, gives you, I mean I'm going to tell you in the most relatable Indian way, it gives you a lot of gypsy vibes because it is very bare minimum. The owner has done a couple of mods like uh, an infotainment system, Bluetooth system and an amplifier for some modernity. But uh, apart from that, it is pretty bare bones on the inside. And uh, what that does is let you focus on what you actually want to do with this car and that is driving. When it comes to the driving dynamics, the car feels rather planted because it is not really an SUV, it is a station wagon which is what people in the West uh, developed to have lots of space but never go on off the track. This is uh, in fact a very good idea if you're not going to be going off-road and uh, being uh, a hooligan of the track. In fact, this car can actually do it, but most station wagons can't. That's why this is actually a very versatile car because on the streets, on tarmac, it feels very planted, it feels quite flat in the corners and it definitely does not feel like a big SUV that's rolling around. The, the suspension is uh, like a sedan. It's rather flat, it's slightly on the stiff side when it comes to the engine, this EJ201 feels very nice and it's super responsive. It's very linear and once you've caught the revs, it's a very eager car to drive. In terms of sound, you get this really quirky whine that sounds like a turbocharged whine but it's actually the belt making that noise. But it feels like it's something special. It does have a very sweet sonorous noise and that is because of the unequal headers that are in front. And it sounds so sweet. It just creates a very special experience for the driver. The gearbox as well 
is very short, very snappy, very good throw. So let's say you are in the market for a Subaru Chevrolet Forester. Well, this thing is most probably rarer than a Lamborghini in our country nowadays. But if you do stumble upon one for sale, they go from anywhere between 5-6 lakhs for a good condition car and maybe 2-4 to four lakhs for one that isn't. Moreover, getting the exact figures for getting a Subaru Forester built in India is very difficult since they are so rare. Which means not many people work on them and that means either the parts need to be imported from Japan or the US or they are custom made. But let's get into the good stuff. What if you want to turbocharge this EJ20 motor? Well, the turbo surprisingly isn't the most expensive part of turbocharging the EJ20. It is the stuff that goes around it like the engine management system, ignition system and fuel system. So since all of this hasn't been done in India, or at least we don't know if anyone who's done it, the EJ20 will be very expensive to turbocharge. Except. The boys over at Wolf Performance and Engineering Exponent are trying to develop a solution to this by coding the stock ECU in a certain way. They have been able to turbocharge an i20 on a stock ECU, so these guys definitely know what they are doing. So with a couple of sensors and some clever coding, the Engineering Exponent guys and Wolf Performance people will most likely be able to turbocharge your Forester for around 5 lakh rupees. And once that is done, you can expect to have a 250 bhp all-wheel drive rally inspired station wagon ready to show your neighbors GLC 43 AMG who's the actual daddy. So while speaking to the owner of this car, he was very sweet and he also reported that uh, he bought this car for quite cheap, um, two and a half lakhs and worked on it for maybe four, four and a half lakhs and that in fact is a very reasonable price for a project car that is so rare. In India, they own, there are only 150 of these and they were only sold and shipped into India in 2004. So you never know how many of these are left. So if you're in the market for a Subaru Forester in India, go for it. But be warned, you're going to have to have a lot of patience and the satisfaction that you're going to get after that is going to be immense. Thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy Bhavneet. Do let us know your thoughts on this Forester and would you like to have a Subaru of your own? Let us know in the comments down below. See you in the next one.